the cramp twins? More like the crap twins. <laughs> no, that's not fair. Cramp twins, whenever I see it referenced or reviewed online, never seems to be revered in a positive light, often getting mocked and ridiculed as one of Cartoon Network's failed shows of the early 2000s. And I think that's a little unfair. It may be because I grew up with the show that I have some sort of nostalgia bias towards it, but I genuinely found it enjoyable to watch. It was no masterpiece by far and certainly had its flaws, but it also had charm and frequent moments that I laughed at. They've got those poor little daffodils all wired up in here. Sorry, Mari. I, uh, I know I should care, but I don't. Oh, and then there was season two. Oh god, season two. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we'll take a look back on the show itself, looking at what made it good, and what made it bad. Right after this video shout out. Homescapes. Homescapes is a free-to-play puzzle game where players renovate a huge mansion and unlock new chapters in the exciting and ever-growing story, starring Austin the Butler and his family. There are a ton of fun and challenging levels to play through, with more being added all of the time, and the rules are super simple, so even if you don't often play puzzle solvers, you'll pick it up right away. And don't think that you have to do it all by yourself, as the game allows you to join up with friends to create a team where you can take place in team-based tournaments and win team-based prizes. Homescapes currently has over 100 million downloads and is published by Playrix, who happen to be one of the top three most successful mobile game developers in the world. So if you'd like to give it a go, you can use my QR code right here, click the link in the description, or check out the pinned comment below. Thank you so much for watching guys, now back to the review. The Crown Twins was an animated show on Cartoon Network that aired in 2001, created by Brian Wood, and is actually based on a book series that he created in 1995. The show is set in the fictional location of Soap City, where we focus around the Cramp family, which consists of the mum, who was like a mad scientist clean freak, the dad, who was obsessed with cowboy stuff, and their twin children, Lucian and Wayne. The two siblings don't get along very well, and this series mostly focuses on how they're at constant war with each other, with Lucian being a soft nature-loving nerd, and Wayne being an aggressive scrap-loving brute. Lucian was voiced by Kafsusi, who has done a whole range of character voices, but you may recognise her Lucian voice as being incredibly similar to Cubit Farnsworth from Futurama. This plan is impossible. We don't even have a sample of the professor's DNA. Uh, it's just for the weekend, Mom. Patsy's gone to a wedding and Orwell wasn't invited. And Wayne is voiced by the legendary Tom Kenny, who has to give Wayne two types of voice in the show. One where he's playing the good little angel act. What would happen to a little boy if an alien got inside of him? And the other where he's his actual angry oh, self. Doesn't matter anyway. Cause mom's never gonna let it in the house! Not only nailing each voice individually, but also doing a brilliant job at combining the two mid-sentence. Oh, hi girls! I'm, uh, feeling better now, and, uh, I have an idea! Let's go find some enemies! There was also a collection of minor characters who would make frequent appearances, such as Wendy Winkle, who had a crush on Wayne. Yeah. Tony Parsons, who was the tiny kid who lived in the swamp and was Lucian's best friend, Miss Hissy, the classroom teacher, where she's strict, with stick, but most importantly, she be thick. And the show was definitely not shy about showing that. Oh god, why? Overall though, I found the show's writing competent enough and I would enjoy the odd episode where amongst all their fighting, Wayne and Lucian would sometimes put their differences aside to tackle a greater threat, which I always thought was quite nice. Kind of like the odd episode where Tom and Jerry would work together. And even though the show was episodic with its storytelling, it did look like it was hinting at a deeper narrative, with seeds planted on how the Winkle family may be descendants of swamp people, and how Mr. Winkle himself used to have a lot of history with Tony Parsons' dad, formerly being known as Ely. 
You can take the man out of the swamp, but you can't take the swamp out of the man. Right, Mr. Winkle? Or should I call you Ely? Sadly, however, due to the show's cancelling, this is something that we'd never end up finding the answers to. One thing you've probably immediately noticed about the show is the unique art style, such as how the characters will feature different coloured skin, kind of like how they did in Doug. Though the colouring of the characters does seem to be a bit random. The Clamp family, for example, the mum and the dad are both shades of green, yet they've birthed twins to which one is flesh coloured and the other is blue slash purple. I'm saying blue, fight me. Adding more confusion is when you see Mrs. Cramp's mother, who seems pretty identical in terms of appearance and skin colour, indicating that there should be some genetic connectivity with the skin colour. So either the show didn't care with its logic, or Mrs. Cramp is an unfaithful hoe. <laughs> oh, Agent X, this is beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> Another distinct feature of the show's style were these additional outer lines that would be added to the characters and certain objects. I'm not sure if there's a technical term for this, or what its real purpose was. Maybe it was to give the characters more perceived movement like the boiling lines used in Ed, Ed and Eddie, or maybe it was just an odd aesthetic choice similar to the scribbly eyes used in Rick and Morty. I know some people are heavily put off by this outer line style. Personally, I don't mind it but I could see where some people might find issue with it. But speaking of eyes, they also gave Wayne these unique red rings around his eyes which no other character possesses, only appearing on the dad when he happens to be super tired. So I'm guessing they're supposed to be like blood vessels? Meaning that Wayne probably looks like a 24-7 coke addict. The animation itself was handled by Sunbrow Entertainment, and it was... fine. Nothing breathtaking, but nothing offensive either. However, after season 1, the show shifted production and was moved over to Telemagination and TV Loonland, where there would be new writers, a new animation team, and a new producer. And this for me, is where things went very, very wrong. Now it's worth quickly noting that in the US, season 1 was actually split into two seasons when airing. So when I refer to season 1 for myself, I'm referring to seasons 1 and 2 for the US. And when I refer to season 2, I'm referring to seasons 3 and 4 in the US. Confused? Okay. One easy way to tell if you're watching the earlier or later season of the show is to look at the opening credits, which was slightly altered when the show shifted production. So if you see Mrs. Cramp strangling her husband in the hospital and the baby makes this crying sound, it's season 1. Whereas if instead of choking her husband, she's merely pulling on his tie and the baby makes this crying sound, it's season 2. All clear? Good. With that clarified, let's take a look at season 2. Well, on first impressions, it doesn't look like too much has changed. Opening credits have been slightly altered, but the style is still there. The voice cast has returned, and some of the old staff are still involved, and even the first episode of Weepy Wayne seems okay. Maybe season 2 won't be so bad after all, right? I can't help it, Mom! It won't stop! So, yeah, although I will try to defend season 1 from people, I cannot bring myself to defend season 2. On surface level, the show looked pretty much the same, but when you actually begin watching episodes, you start to notice the drastic decline in quality. The animation itself declined in quality as characters would frequently go off model episode to episode. They also added a flurry of new sound effects, which not only sounded incredibly generic, but were played way too loud and way too frequent. <laughs> But the most notable drop was with the writing. Character personalities would become increasingly altered and exaggerated. Wayne's aggression was heavily amped up, and he would seemingly get away with murder in the family. The dad was reduced to a man-child who basically became Wayne's bitch of a psychic. Lucian became incredibly pretentious at times, and for the most part, didn't even seem to be friends with Tony or Murray anymore. 
Tony seemed to have developed incredible small man syndrome and becomes an insufferable prick in some episodes. You're banned! Hey! Get out of my swamp! Just step on him, Lucian. And Mari's character seemed to just be constantly annoyed at Lucian, becoming more of a cynical nag rather than a supporting friend. Though, to be fair, there was one episode where they dated, and I don't blame her for not wanting to be around Lucian after this instance. But the bugs sure are. Lucian! What the fuck? They also introduced this new principal character, Mr. Pretty who's supposed to be this super progressive character, basically think of PC Principal from South Park. And I think like PC Principal in South Park, Mr. Pretty is meant to be more of a mockery of political correctness rather than an ambassador for it. As we get moments like this from him. In this school, we embrace cultural diversity in all its forms. No hats in class, ball deep. But it is a turban, Mr. Pretty. Yeah, whatever. Just take it off. But I think his main role in the show was just to act as a plot device to enable Wayne to get away with his shenanigans. Speaking of being progressive though, season 2 did tend to have a large focus on discrimination, particularly sexism. Sexism, no! The pageant must go! Boy games and girl games. How predictably sexist. Mom! That is so sexist! Pageants are sexist and bad for women everywhere! Oh, wow. It all sounds so sexist! Truth is, I'm the only one in my family unsexist enough to help Mom! Wait! Crap! You are so sexist! Go on, sexism! Go with you, skirts! <gasps> I'm holding the door open for a lady. How sexist! Oh, ladies first! That's so sexist! You're not sexist, Gucci Cramp! I don't know why this suddenly happened. Were the writers actively trying to be more progressive? Or was it a response to some potential criticism the show got from season 1? So the show actually introduced these elements in order to mock them. Because often the sexism issues seem to be played up for laughs, and just listen to this musical cue we get when we see Mrs. Cramp enter in her maid's outfit. Hi, Mom. Uh, are you okay? You look like a maid. Uh-huh. Or maybe they just wanted to get away with using the word sex in a kid's show. No, Celeste. I mean, the things she says are sexist. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa said a dirty word. <laughs> And finally, you just have really badly written episodes in general. Example 1. Lucian finds what he believes is a super rare egg, and now everyone is after it. Turns out the egg wasn't actually super rare, and was in fact just a regular egg that got dirty. Even though the egg was cleaned earlier that episode, and was even recognised as being clean from a character that's obsessed with cleaning. It's smooth, for instance, and very, very clean. Why, you can even polish it. Another episode features Mr. Winkle intentionally releasing head lice so he can sell more shampoo. He does this by making all the students wear a lice infected wig. All that is, except his daughter Wendy. At the end of the episode, all the kids need to have their hair singed off to kill the lice. All that is, except for Wendy, who is gloating. A small breeze then enters the classroom and somehow manages to blow her entire hair off. But those episodes have nothing on these next three. Spit Collector, for example, involves Wayne collecting all the spit from the townsfolk so he can fake a saliva test. Most of this episode is just plain gross, with Wayne even using the spit for hair gel and bubble bath, eventually putting all the spit into one bucket and then consuming it. Quality stuff. There's the episode Wendy House, where Wendy really amps up the stalk factor on Wayne, basically setting up a house right next to his bedroom where she spies on him getting naked, sneaks into his room at night to sexually assault him, and even watches him while he sleeps, where she's dedicated an entire love tunnel for him. What the fuck? Seriously, she even makes Helga from Hey Arnold obtain. This, of course, is all played up for laughs, and even when she is discovered, there's no punishment for her whatsoever. I feel violated. And finally, there's my least favourite episode of the show, 
Wendyware, in which Wendy is a completely unlikable spoiled brat. Now I'll admit, even in season 1, Wendy was probably my least favourite character. But even then there were times where she would have legitimate funny moments. Oops, I've wounded. You have a manly appetite. <laughs> you touch my cake and I'm calling security. And though for the most part she was a spoiled brat, her parents would stand up to her if she was pushing it too far. But we can't blow up the swamp. I'll scream. I said no! But of course, in season 2, this is nowhere to be seen. And this episode highlights that the most. Wendy decides that she wants to be a fashion designer, and so starts designing all these ludicrous outfits for the people of Soap City. Which begins to lead to all sorts of health and safety accidents. She also designs the outfits for her fellow classmates, which of course includes Wayne. Who is put in a really questionable outfit, which also happens to expose his ass. And considering he's meant to be around the age of 10 years old here, this just feels really, really off. Especially when in order to get him to wear the outfit, two grown men had to kidnap him in the park and strip him naked. Let me go. Give me back my yeah, eventually the townspeople start protesting Wendy's fashion, where she plays herself the victim. And the episode ends with her then humiliating her parents, to which she receives no punishment whatsoever. So yeah, in conclusion, if you were to ask me what I thought of the Cramp Twins, my answer would be depending on what season. Season 1, I'll admit is no masterpiece and will accept the flaws people have with it, but I wouldn't say it was awful, and I still think it has charm and can make for an enjoyable watch. Season 2 however... Yeah, I really can't defend that one. Not every episode in season 2 is bad, some are actually okay, but when it sucks, it really sucks. If you haven't yet seen the show or want to give it a second chance, I'd recommend checking out these episodes to start you off, as these are the ones that I feel are the strongest, or the ones that I just enjoyed the most. And at the moment, most of the episodes seem to be freely available on YouTube, so why not? And until the next one, take care. Mrs. O'Pappy. <sighs> so I guess you get to wrestle her all the time, huh? <laughs> sure do. <laughs>